Hello everyone, I am back once again. Of course, just as I start recording, it turns into night, that's fantastic. Um, here we go. Fixed it. Um, so, I'm finally back with a computer craft video. Um, since my last video, someone joined the server I was on and asked me to do a video on APIs in computer craft. So basically, how do you create an API and uh, load it into uh, another file and use it? Uh, I guess a good place to start is to explain what an API actually is. Um, I believe it stands for Application Programming Interface. Um, there might be some other possible uh, um, terms that pe people use, but um, I'll stick with that one for now. Um, let's just call it an API, <laughs> and I'll explain what it is now. Um, so, basically, um, what an API is, it's uh, a program I guess, or a little bit of software that you have access to via code. So, that might have been a bad explanation. But, for example, to move the turtle, we've been using turtle.forward and that kind of stuff. Now, this function you're using is part of the turtle API, um, which is basically everything that is in the turtle packet, so all the functions that come from turtle, like turtle.turn left and stuff. Um, these are all functions within the turtle API and they allow you to um, do things with the turtle that would normally require a bunch more code because you know behind these functions there's a whole lot of code running um, just like the functions we would write in our own programs we've got a bunch of code in our functions um, you're basically making this code run just like that by uh, calling it and that saves you a lot of time you don't have to you know muck about every time you want to turn your turtle left you've got to you know change the block direction of the turtle and then re-render the graphics, it does it all for you. So, it saves you a bunch of time and you can do kind of higher level stuff uh, with it. Um, now the thing is, um, we might want to create APIs of our own. Uh, for example, which is what I'm going to be doing today, um, is take a look at um, basically all of the movement stuff we implemented for the quarry and uh, also this cylinder guy. Um, see, because every time we uh, create these turtles, we're using the same code for moving forward, turning right and left, keeping track of our coordinates and our orientation. Now, all of this could, you know, much better be stuck into an API, which we just load in every time. So we can just keep the same file, the exact same interface, um, and use this uh, whenever we need to use a turtle and to have it move around. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, start a new file. I'm going to call it move. Uh, and our API is going to be called the move API. Um, you could probably think of a better name yourself, but I'm just going to go with that for now because it's nice and short. Um, now to do that, I need to get out of this file because <laughs> that otherwise it won't work. Here we go. Edit move. So we created this file move. I'm just going to save it. and I'm going to exit. And I'm going to head over to a folder where it should have been created. Here we go and I'm going to open it in Notepad++. Notepad++. Right, so we've got an empty file. Now this first part is going to be really easy because I'm just going to copy paste uh, the things we had made before. Oh god. Is this one? No. <laughs> I was kind of hoping to find one which didn't have spaces between every single line. I guess it doesn't matter that much. Uh, move forward. Yeah, we'll grab that one. Move up. Move down, look, it's a useful one. Go to, yeah, we'll take that one for sure. Um, return items a little bit too specific. Dig line, dig layer, this is all quarry stuff. So we'll copy that. Um, everything up until go to, I think. Bling, we'll put that in there. Um, there's probably a little bit of things in here, like we don't need X quarry, Z quarry, that can all go. Progress can go, we don't have that. Uh, home, that might be useful. Um, why travel? I guess we can keep that. Okay. Um, line length and lines. That's not interesting. Why min is not interesting. Inventory full. No, that's not really anything to do with this. Um, left is important. Right is important. Move forward. Move up and move down. Now we don't have our y min anymore, so we'll get rid of that. Hopefully I didn't leave too much stuff in here that is uh, code that we no longer have, or variables we no longer have. 
this is looking good. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little test here to see if it actually um, works. So we'll save that. I believe move forward is what I called that function. Right, move forward. There we go. Okay, good. So um, let's try running move. Uh, move forward. Okay, so it compiles and it's working. Good. Um, so now we have all our functions here, which is nice. Now how do you turn it into an API? Well, quite simply, we already have. This is all you have to do. Um, this is the most simple way to create an API, and it's not really the, the best way of doing it. Um, but for this episode, we'll stick with this. And the next episode, I'll show you how to uh, um, yeah, kind of hide certain things that you don't want people who are using your API to have access to. Um, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, so now we have a move. Uh, now we're going to create another file, which is going to be uh, a program. And this is going to be the program that is going to be using our API. Now the way to uh, use an API, basically all you need to do is have the file or your API in the same uh, same folder pretty much. Or you can probably put the directory in here. You can go like slash blah 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 and then find the file. But it's in the same same directory, so we just have to load file move. So OS dot load, um, not just load. It's load API, and it should be loaded now. Um, let me just uh, save and exit. We run a program test. There we go. So it has loaded it. That's good. Um, once again, I'm gonna just. Whoop. Opening all sorts of things I don't want to be opening. All right. Notepad plus plus. So here's our program. Um, now what you can do is you can mo use functions from move um, exactly like you would uh, the turtle functions. So we can do move dot uh, move forward. Now you see you've got to think about your naming here because we we named our function move forward, um, and now <laughs> we've also named our file move. Um, so what I could do is just uh, call this function just forward and then it would make more sense to be move dot forward. Um, so let's see if this works. Also we'll save that and then we'll go test program. There we go. It moved forward. It moved forward a little bit more than I thought it would. Um, let me try that again. It moved forward twice now. Um, so that's interesting. Let's see why it's doing that. I honestly do not know why it's doing it twice. I'm really confused by that. Let's try something else. Okay. So let's see if it turns around. It's always moving forward. That's in Oh, I know why. I'm an idiot. Um in the move API, I put this move forward function at the end here. Get rid of that. Make sure there's no code that can is being executed in your uh, <laughs> in your API because things go wrong. All right, let's try that again. No program. There we go. Okay, so it's moving around once now. That's good. So that's it basically. You can now call functions, do all kinds of things with your move uh, thing. Now, one thing that's not so handy is that um, the way this API is set up now is there's no protection for all of your variables and that kind of thing. Um, so at the moment in my program, I could do move dot x. What do I call it? X chord is equal to I don't know, like 500, and then it'll actually change it, which is not really what you want people to be doing. You want them to only have access to certain functions um, which they're allowed to use and all of the other stuff should be you know, not accessible to whoever's using the API because they can mess things up, like they can change your orientation to 1000 or something stupid um, and screw up your program. So you don't want that to happen. Um, now I say this will work, I'm not so sure. Test. Okay, it did it. So yeah, if I let them print uh, move dot x whoops x chord 
Um, so yeah, it's 500 now. <laughs> so you don't really want that. Because um, you don't want people to be changing your X coordinates uh, at random. Um, but we'll get into that next episode. So now you already know how to create a simple API. As long as no one else is using it and using it correctly yourself, uh, nothing should go wrong. Um, so thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And we'll uh, improve this API uh, and make it a little bit more logical with the names and also make it uh, a little bit safer. Right, see you next time. Thanks for watching.